Again, welcome back to inferential statistics in decision making. This lecture has covered the hypothesis testing for variance and standard deviation. This is Unit 7, Part 5 lectures. So our main objective is to learn how to find the critical values for a chi-square test. Also, how to use the chi-square test to test a variance or a standard deviation. So to find the critical values for the chi-square test, first we need to specify the level of significance, which will be given to us always. So we need to know the alpha value. Then next we need to know the sample size. If we know the sample size, then we can determine the degree of freedom. Now, if we know the alpha value and the degree of freedom, then we are going to use the chi squared distribution table to find the critical value. In our textbook, to be appendix B, table number six. So next, we find the critical values for the chi squared distributions, which are again are found in the chi squared distribution table. Uh, we have three different types. So we, if we have the right tail test, we are going to use the value that corresponds to the degree of freedom and alpha. Now, if it's a left tail test, we are going to use the value that corresponds to the degree of freedom and one minus alpha. Then if it's a two tail test, we use the values that correspond to the degree of freedom and half times alpha and also the degree of freedom and one minus half times alpha. So those are the three possible ways. So this is how our right tail looks like. Uh, so the blue area is where we have our value. Uh, the blue and the brown area, that will be our boundary, whether we're going to accept or reject the claim. Uh, in order to do that, we need to find the test statistics and we compare it to the critical value. This is our left tail. So in the left tail, again, we have to know the one minus alpha and the blue area is our alpha. Then we also have the two tail. On the left side, we have alpha, half times alpha, right side, half times alpha. So let's see an example here. This example says we should find the critical value for chi square and our test is a left tail test. When the sample size is 11, the alpha is given to us to be 0 0.01. Now, since this is a left tail test, all we need is the value of n, which is the sample size, and also the alpha value. So we can find the degree of freedom, which will give us n minus 1. The sample size is 11 minus 1, so that gives us 10. Then we already know the alpha value, so we can go to our chi square distribution table. Normally, on the column, we have the alpha values. On the rows, we have the degree of freedom. So the intersection of the, again, degree of freedom value and the alpha value will give us, again, the critical value. Now, here we say that the degree of freedom is given. Now, the area to the right of the critical value, as we said, it to be 1 minus alpha. So that gives us 0 0.99. Then again, we go to the table says appendix B, we can find the corresponding value for again the critical. Next, they say we should find the critical chi square value for two tail tests when n is 13 and alpha is 0 0.01. So two tail tests means we are going to be concerned with both left and the right section. So the degree of freedom again, the sample size is 13 minus one, it will give us 12. Then we have the areas to the right of the critical values will be half times alpha, which give us 0 0.005. And then we have one minus half, half times alpha, which will give us 0 0.995. So here we have to have both the left and the right tail section. So from our table, again, that is the chi square distribution table. We can find a critical value. For the left side, we get 3.074. On the right side, we get 28.299. So our answer will be 3.074 and 28.299. So normally, again, to find a critical value, we need two items. 
we need a sample size and also we need a value of alpha. So next is the chi-square test for variance or st standard deviation. This, would, this is again, it's a statistics test for a population variance or standard deviation. This can be used when the population is normal. That's the normal distributed. Now we need to find the test statistics, which is S square. And the standard test statistics formula, which is the chi square will be N minus one S square divided by the standard deviation square. And the degree of freedom again is N minus one. So let's go through the steps in words and also in symbols. As we all know, this is hypothesis testing. So the first thing we need to do is to state our claim, which is the null hypothesis, and also the alternative hypothesis, which always go against the null hypothesis. So the first thing we state the claim mathematically and verbally, we identify the null hypothesis and also the alternative hypothesis. Next, we have to specify the level of significance, which will be given to us, always is given to us. So we identify the alpha. Then next, we can determine the degree of freedom. And then we can sketch our sampling distribution. So degree of freedom, again, will be the sample size minus one. Then next, we can determine the critical values using the chi square table, as we did previous example. Next, we need to determine any rejection region. Now, the rejection region would, uh, would be concerned with the test statistics value we get. So if we find the standardized test statistics, which is N minus one times S square over standard deviation square. Then we make a decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, here we say that if chi square is in the rejection region, then we are going to reject HO. Otherwise, we're going to fail to reject HO. And then after that, we are going to interpret the decision in the context of original claim. So let's see one example. So here we have a, a dairy processing company. They claim that the variance of amount of fat in the whole milk process by the company is no more than 0 0.25. Now you suspect this is a wrong, and also you find that a random sample of 41 milk containers has a variance of 0 0.27 and also at alpha equal to 0 0.05. Our question now is that, is there enough evidence to reject the company's claim, assuming the population distribution gain is normal? So here we can see that the sample size is given to us. Uh, from the sample size, we even know the value of the variance. Alpha also is given to us. And we have a claim here. The claim said that the, and the dairy processing company claimed that the variance of the amount of fat in the whole milk processed by the company is no more than 0 0.25. So we can state our HO and HA. HO said that it's not more than 0 0.25. So here we have, again, a less than or equal to 0 0.25. So always we said that the alternative hypothesis will go against the null hypothesis. So the variance will be greater than 0 0.25. Alpha is given to us to be 0 0.05. We know the sample size, so we can be able to find the degree of freedom. So sample size is 41 minus 1, so we get 40. Now we can sketch our rejection region. So we know the alpha value 0 0.05. Uh, we go to our table and then we look for the degree of freedom and the alpha value. And the critical value there was 55.758. Now we need to do our test statistics. We know the formula is S square equal to N minus one S square over variance. So here again, we have the and the population variance and also the standard. So we plug in the values 41 
n is 41 minus 1. And then our s square from the from the question is given to us to be 0 0.27. So we can see when we collect our sample, we have 41 red containers, so n is 41. And then the sample variance is 0.27. So again, the x square is the sample variance. Then the sigma square is our population variance, which is the cream. So we plug in all the values here, and we get that value to be 43.2, which means 43.2 will fell under the brown area. So here we can say that we failed to reject HO because again, the brown area is the HO. Normally, we can also say that if the critical value is greater than the test statistics, then we are going to reject, uh, sorry, we are going to fail to reject HO. We are going to accept HO. So we put it in a, in a words, uh, according to the question, at a 5% level of significance, there is not enough evidence to reject the company scream. So we are going to keep the company scream, as they said, the variance is less than or equal to 0 0.25. So that's the steps, same as our previous t-test uh, and over the same step. We state our HO and HA. We have our alpha value, the degree of freedom, this will help us to get a critical value. Then we do our test statistics. Now, if the test statistics value is greater than the critical value, then we are going to reject HO. But if it's less than the critical value, in this case, we are going to accept HO. Or normally, we are going to say that fail to reject HO. So we have another question here. Here they say a restaurant claims that the standard deviation in the length of serving time is less than 2.9 minutes. A random sample of 23 serving times has a standard deviation of 2.1. So 2.1 minutes will be our sample standard deviation. And also we say a random sample of 23. So our sample size is 23. The alpha value is given to be 0 0.10. Now, our question is that, is there enough evidence to support the restaurant's claim? Assuming population gain is normally distributed. And uh, the claim here, according to the restaurant, is that the standard deviation in the length of seven times is less than 2.9 minutes. So again, we have almost everything we are going to state our HO, which was the claim by the restaurant owners. And they said, again, it should be greater than or equal to 2.9. So in this case, HA will be less than 2.9. Always the alternative hypothesis or HA will go against HO. Alpha is given to us to be 0 0.10. We know the sample size is 23, so minus 1 will give us 22. So now we know the sample size, and also we know the alpha. We can come up with the rejection region. Then we are going to find, again, the critical value from our table. Again, our textbook is table number 6 in Appendix B. Uh, based on this, our critical value is 14.042. Now we can do our test statistics. We know the sample size is 23 minus 1. The standard deviation, I mean, the, sorry, the variance for the sample is given to us to be 2.1. So we say 2.1 square. Then we have the variance also given to us, 2.9, 2.9 square. Here we have 11.536. So this means, again, we have the same... 11.536, we can see our rejection, it will fall, fall under the blue area. So that will be the rejection region. Again, remember this time we're on the left side. Greater than or equal, the less will be the left. So we are going to reject HO. Why? Because 11.536 fell in the blue area. 
our blue area is where we are going to reject. The previous first question, our test statistics, value fell in the orange area or the brown area. And this means we are going to accept H. So here we say at a 10% level of significance, there is enough evidence to support the claim that the standard deviation for the length of serving the time is less than 2.9. And so the alternative hypothesis. So now we have another example. Here we say a sporting goods manufacturer claimed that variance of the strength in a certain fishing line is 15.9. So that is the claim. A random sample of 15 fishing line spools has a variance of 21.8. So here we know the sample size to be 15. The sample variance also is 21.8. And the alpha is given to us to be 0 0.05. Now, our question is, is there enough evidence to reject the manufacturer's claim? Assuming the population is normally distributed. So we are going to state our H O and H again, which is equal to 50.9 according to the question. So this is a two-way. Got a claim that the variance of the is in certain line is 15.9. So this is equal. If they say less or greater, then it can be left or right tail test. Here we are going to have a two-tail test. So we can say either it's equal to 15.9 or not equal. Alpha is 0 0.05 given to us. And the sample size is given. So minus one, we give us the degree of freedom. Now we are going to sketch our rejection region. This time it will be two-way. So we go to our table and we find the left side. And we know the degree of freedom. We know the half. Uh, alpha times half, as we have it here. So we find, again, both values. Then next, we are going to do our test statistics. Now, this value, if it fell under any of the blue, then we are going to again reject HO. If it fell under the gray or the orange area, then we are going to fail to reject HO. So we have 19.194. So we can see that it will be in the gray area. So here we are going to fail to reject HO. So here we say at the 5% level of significance, there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that the variance in the strength of the fishing line is 15.9. So that will be the conclusion of our lectures. In these lectures, again, we go through the concept of chi-square uh, distribution table, how we can use it to find a critical value. And also we do a chi-square test for variance. So we find the critical values for chi square test and we use the chi square test to test a variance or a standard deviation also. So again, see you in the next lectures and thank you for your time.